He was a tough guy. Bob Brown was a tough guy. And he's a big guy. I mean, he pumped iron before guys did. I mean, his arms looked like legs. The most intimidating offensive lineman in NFL history was a huge, angry man named Robert Stanford Brown. Bob Brown took the game and he played offense with a defensive guy's personality. Bob Brown believed that he could hit you with his forearm and, as he used to say, take a quarter out of you. In other words, if he really hit you, you know, that you wouldn't play hard until probably the next quarter. I didn't uh, try to finesse guys. I just tried to beat up on them for 60 minutes. Bob Brown didn't just block people. Trying to hit that area that is just below where the shoulder pads stop. There's a lot of real meaty, nice parts in that area. We can get a little bit of spleen. But his attitude earned him a one-way ticket to Los Angeles to do his dirty work for the Ram. Once again, Boomer made the Pro Bowl, and once again, he was sent packing. This time to a team that matched his mood, the Oakland Raiders. We got Bob the first day, and no one knows, you know, Bob Brown. They don't know him personally, they just know his reputation. He walks out of the locker room and he walks all the way up to the other end, you know, where the goalposts are. He hits a goalpost with his forearm, knocks a goalpost. And we go, crack, crack, and the whole goalpost goes right down. My whole guys, I mean, all the guys are looking like this. Oh. You know, and then they didn't know what to call him, you know, Bob Ruth, so they said, the Mr. They called him Mr. Brown. Turned around, walked off the field. Al Davis put Bob Brown onto our team, and Bob Brown had this gigantic thumb, and he'd stick that thumb right into the guy's ribs. And it wasn't too long before Gene Upshaw had the thumb, which was permanently broken during the season just on Sunday. Behind crushing blocking by Bob Brown. Big man. Yes, sir. Bob Brown might be the Art best in the shell. business. When Bob Brown wants to play, he can handle any defensive end in football. Probably my biggest example of being intimidated was he played the, the Oakland Raiders and L.C. Greenwood lined up over Bob Brown. And uh, as the course of the game was going on, I kept hearing moans and groans over there. And I said, L.C., what's happening? He said, oh, man, the guy's killing me. And I said, oh, let me have you move down the tackle. Let me go over there. And when I lined up in front of Bob, I, I looked at, at his face and, and that helmet, and I, I could, all I could see was his eyes. And I said, oh, my goodness, this doesn't look good at all. Just the look in that helmet was intimidating and, 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 and very fearful. And all I remember is getting up after the play was over, looking through my ear hole of the helmet, and one shoe was off. 
So I, I told him, I said, hey, you got him. You got him back. my super aggressive DEFCON 5 style. My final stop was the Oakland Raiders. I'd like to thank Mr. Al Davis for trading for me and giving me an opportunity to play with the greatest, wildest, most talented group of mixed nuts ever assembled anywhere. The football gods were kind to afford me that opportunity. Every player who has played in the National Football League should have had an opportunity to play for the 70s Raiders and coach John Madden. I'm proud and privileged to be able to have my name mentioned along with four great Raider Hall of Fame offensive linemen, Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, Jim Otto, and Ron Mix. Better has not been born yet. <laughs>